All right, so thanks for the introduction. My name is Louis. I'm uh, responsible for product marketing um, at TomTom in the enterprise and developer relations. I'm, uh, as I just explained, part of the team that's behind the TomTom developer portal. Uh, this portal for us is a way to, um, to share our technology with uh, the widest audience uh, as we can. And I'm really glad to be in this event uh, because there are not that many events uh, for people like us that are building developer portals and trying to share their APIs and SDKs with uh, with the world. So it's uh, it's good to be at this event where it's not about selling your products, but more about sharing what you've learned um, and, and getting knowledge as well. So today I'm going to talk about um, using personas to develop, uh, to tailor your developer portal because as we've embarked on this journey, um, we realize that it's very important to uh, first first of all understand your audience, but it's also um, quite important to segment that audience um, because developer is a very uh, misunderstood word. Why do you need to segment your audience? Uh, well, for a very simple reason is that there are more than 26 million developers out there uh, in the world. And, um, and they're all different. There's all sorts of developers. There's different level of experiences. Some are very juniors and they're self-starters and they're self-teaching themselves how to code. Some are university educated and have years of experience. They're using different programming languages. Uh, they have different habits where to find information. Um, they work in different types of companies. Some will work for Fortune 500 uh, companies in very large teams. Some will be freelancers. Some will be uh, coding just for fun uh, or for charity. So saying that your product, which by the way, your product is your developer portal. We have to be very clear uh, among ourselves with that. Saying that, uh, that your developer portal is for all developers uh, is very broad. I love that quote. It comes from uh, Mary Thangwell, a great book. I, the, the title is uh, at the bottom of the slide. If there's one book you need to read about developer relations, uh, that's the one. So the second uh, reason you need to, uh, to really know your audience and to segment it is that uh, most likely these API portals and developer portals that you're building, uh, they're kind of new to your company. And so you have to explain your audience to a lot of internal teams. You have to explain it to your management, uh, you have to explain it to uh, the marketing teams, to the PR teams. You have to explain it um, to a lot of internal stakeholders. And when you say, my product is for developers, uh, in their minds, they have these kinds of images. They have this stereotype of the developer, very clear stereotype. It's usually a male that wears glasses, will uh, have several screens, work mostly at nights, uh, has several keyboards. So that's the stereotype that they tend to have in their minds. Um, and that is why you need to actually find a way to explain your audience very clearly to these guys so they can do a great job at supporting you uh, and promoting your developer portal. Uh, one thing to also keep in mind, um, and that's especially for those of you who have a developer portal where they're trying to actually sell and uh, sell technology, is that the buyer is really the user. Uh, that's a very common truth uh, in our world. So the people that are coming to your developer portals, uh, developers are often the users, but they're not necessarily the ones that will make the final decision to go for your technology instead of your competitors. Actually, if you look at research, it's on average six to seven people that are involved in any purchasing decision um, in B2B uh, selling. So it's very important that you build your developer portal not only keeping the user in mind, but keeping those five and other six people in that company that will also and land on your portal at some point. And they're also looking for content uh, so that they can make uh, the right technology choice. Um, so one way you can achieve that is by uh, using personas. Uh, personas is a tool that's um, commonly used in a lot of uh, marketing and product marketing. And I think they're particularly interesting when you're trying to do a developer portal. Personas, what are they? I'm going to try to give a, a, a broad definition. They're like the characters of a good book. Uh, and the characters of a good book, when they're well written, um, they have a backstory, they have tastes. You can actually picture them in your hand. And although they're fictional, they're relatable. You can feel close to them and you can kind of identify them when you see other people. So personas are exactly that. They're fictional characters that are meant to represent your audience. Uh, and going to a final level of detail, they're just saying developers. So a few things more about personas. They're stereotypes. We should not be afraid of that word. Personas are stereotypes, but there's good stereotypes. There's stereotypes that are specific to your business, they're specific to your industry, they're specific to your products. 
And if you do it right, they'll be very specific to your developer portal. Um, they're a great way to explain your audience to non-developers. Uh, they're a great way to explain to the marketing team, these are the people we're talking to. This is These are the people we should be targeting with our advertising campaign uh, or with our blog posts. They're a tool to align teams to have a, a common understanding of who we are building these APIs for. Even your product teams need to be aware of your personas. Very important to understand that it's a qualitative exercise. It's not a quantitative exercise. Personas are completely different than market segments. Uh, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship, so you do not use them for market sizing. You use them for a different purpose. And it's also very important to keep in mind that it's a never-finished exercise. Uh, you know when you start, you don't know when you finish. It's a continuous process where you start, you get to an MVP, you, you test it, you implement it, and you test and test and observe and observe and observe and refine it and add more personas if you need to uh, and change your personas if some of your earlier assumptions were wrong. So how does it physically take shape? Typically, a persona is a one-pager, and that one-pager is telling the day of the life in the life of that persona that you have defined for your uh, for your business. Um, the persona, you'll have information such as who they are, how they call, you even give them a name, how old they are, where they live, what is their family situation. Is this a 20 to 25 year old uh, single person or is it a mother of three living um, in, a, in a suburban area? You'll focus on where they work, what is their job title, very important, how experienced they are, the type of companies that they work for, um, what is their role in the purchasing process if you're trying to sell a product? Very uh, important to understand whether they're the one that have the money and will be able to decide or whether they're an influencer or a user. And then you'll try to get intimate with them. You'll try to understand what do they like, what makes them tick, what do they hate, uh, what frustrates them, and trying to understand what is their, what are their deep motivations, what motivates them, what are they afraid of, uh, one of them wants to impress his boss. One of them wants to become the best uh, at coding in specific programming language. It's very important to try to understand what they're trying to achieve. And their personality. Their personality because those little things, although they might seem trivial, if someone is extremely detail-oriented or tend to be extremely detail-oriented, then you need to make sure that his journey on a developer portal uh, is paying attention to all the details. So that's... That's the portrait you're trying to, uh, to draw when you build a persona. Um, some tips and tricks that I can share based on, on what we've done uh, at TomTom Tom and what we've learned in these exercises is that there are plenty of canvases and templates available. Um, I'm happy to share some links with you uh, during the in-conference uh, call, so start with that. Don't be afraid to start with your own stereotypes. Uh, when we started at TomTom, Tom, I remember sitting in a, in a room with, a, with our team and we were you know, putting some post-its on the walls and making stereotypes, right? Saying, yeah, I think we have a developer that looks like that. So use your intuition, use your experience and start with that. Don't be afraid to say it's a stereotype. Remember, it's, an, it's a never finished exercise. You're always trying to be um, improving it. So make it a team exercise. Don't sit at your desk trying to figure it out uh, alone. Talk to developers. The closest developers to you is usually the software engineers within your own company. We've used them actively uh, as inspiration for us. And then we checked uh, whether this matched the reality of our audience. Avoid the imposter syndrome. So again, you will never be done. You will never be right. You're trying to get to a closer stereotype to the reality, uh, moving from a very broad stereotype developers. So there is no right or wrong. And you will refine over time, and you have to get out there. And last but not least, that's the most important thing. Observe, observe, and observe. Hang out with your audience. Look at their posts. I read the forum posts uh, on the TomTom Tom developer portal every day, and I try in my head to say, this is a post from this type of persona that we've defined. I read their emails. I look at the tone, what they write us about, well, how they share their frustrations. I look at their names, their locations, even the email addresses. I check it out to see what kind of nicknames they're using. Um, you need to hang out with them. So um, part of our uh, process to check and define our personas was for us to hang out a lot at developer meetups, to go to hackathons, um, to go to developer events, such as this one, actually, uh, in the physical edition. 
and then engage with them. And when we engage with them, we were trying to recognize is this person that I'm talking to fitting into one of the personas that we have in mind? And if not, perhaps I should be creating uh, an extra person. Where and how to use them? Um, so really using personas, again, it's going from developers want, which is way too vague for the people you're talking to, to what would Pam think of this? Um, it's an internal tool. I will never show the personas that I have at TomTom Tom, um, in my marketing on my portal, but it's an internal tool that has a very big external impact if you use it right. So some advice, very practical. Once you've got your first version of your persona, build a deck, introduce them, and share it with every team you work with. And that goes from marketing to finance, to your leadership, to the product teams, to the support teams. Everybody needs to get familiar with your personas. Um, some of us put posters of our personas uh, on the walls in the, in the business so that everybody, when it comes to the office, they get familiar with these personas. And we have a bit of a game at TomTom Tom where we refer to them every day in normal conversation as if they were a friend or a colleague. So, um, Sometimes we're discussing a piece of content with the marketing team and we say, how would Pam react to this? Or how would Bartosz look at this? And that's very important. And, and that brings me to my last point, which is you need to build your content. And more than your content, you need to build the journeys on your developer portal with those personas in mind. So whenever you're starting a project, uh, doing a marketing briefing uh, for a blog post, for a tutorial with, uh, with your developer evangelists, Whenever you are trying to improve the web experience on your portal, you need to kick off that project by making it clear we are building this for the following personas. And that would help you. That will help you align, make everybody, all the stakeholders in that project, all the people um, that will contribute to it, have it very clearly in their mind who they are building it for. And that is essential. So enough about the theory. Um, now I'm going to show you some examples of how we were able to revamp uh, and update our developer portal based on uh, the TomTom personas that we had defined. So first, our personas for developer.tomtom.com. Uh, we found out we had four uh, types of personas. Uh, we might have more in the future, but so far, most of the users that we actually engage with in real life, we can easily make them fall in any of these uh, stereotypes. We've got two very technical profiles, uh, DJ the hacker and Bartosz the engineer. And then we have two profiles that actually are more business oriented. And that's Devin, the startup founder, and Pam, the PM. So I'm going to introduce them uh, very quickly. They're my friends. I talk about them every day. And um, if I have some colleagues in the call today, I'm sure they they recognize a lot of these people. Um, so DJ is a young developer. He tends to be a freelancer or a slasher, or he changed changes job very frequently. Someone that uh, tends to uh, teach himself a lot of uh, programming stuff. Um, and he tends to like uh, to favor speed over quality. So he's always trying new things, um, always wants to find uh, the quickest and smartest way uh, to get to his objective. Um, typically young, doing a lot of jobs, trying a lot of new things, and he'll always be the first one to test whatever new API you're putting on the market. Then we have Bartosz, who is uh, completely different, um, someone that is very experienced, has, uh, is a very solid professional, typically works for a larger company, has typically been trained as a software engineer or in a related field. Um, and Bartosz is a bit different. He doesn't favor speed over quality. He actually likes quality. He's very detail oriented. He hates marketing. He hates the gimmicks. He goes straight to the point. Um, doesn't like marketing bullshit. He will want to check what's under the hood of your technology. So you also need to kind of build a journey for Bartosz. And then we have David. David is a startup founder. He kind of sits in the middle. He can be the CEO or the CTO of a startup is um, trying to build the next Uber uh, in short. Typically, uh, he will often have a bit of a programming background, so he's got enough to understand and check out your technology, but he's not necessarily the one that will be using it every day. He's looking for speed because he's trying to launch a business, he's got limited resources, uh, and he's trying to make quick decisions because he's really trying to, uh, to innovate. And then we've got Pam. And Pam will actually quite often work with Bartosz, our software engineer. Um, she's more of a product manager or product owner, so more of a business profile. Uh, typically works for medium to large companies. 
and she's not necessarily here to look at your code. She's looking, uh, she's here to uh, try and find out whether your product has the potential to solve her business problems. So she's not interested in codes. She's interested in returns on investment. She wants to impress her boss. So uh, our product and your developer portal uh, needs to make her look good and help her achieve uh, that motivation. So those are our four personas of, as we've defined them. Uh, and now let's look how we've tailored our portal for these different personas. So for us, it started with the top level navigation. So um, at TomTom, we're, we're very, uh, we're focusing a lot on building more APIs and SDKs, and we noticed that our API portfolio was growing and growing and growing. It's growing in size, there's more endpoints, more APIs, and it was becoming uh, more and more difficult to explain that portfolio to Pam. Um, um, because Pam is business-oriented, she doesn't have much time, uh, and she needs to keep it simple. So we created um, a simplified product overview for Pam, uh, which you can see on the left, where we grouped our different services into categories that are easily recognizable for PAM, that are using industry terms that she's familiar with. Always remember to use uh, SEO uh, insights to do that. F find the right names for your products and for your product categories. It will drive you traffic, uh, free traffic to your developer portal. So choose the names carefully for your pages uh, and documentation. And then for Bartosz, we, uh, we decided to have a completely different navigation. Uh, so Bartosz, he likes exhaustivity, he likes precision, he likes the details, he needs to be logical, doesn't need to look good. Um, so we have this documentation navigation, which gives him quick access to all the detailed APIs that we have, all the tools, all the examples that he needs. So that was the first step, really, from the top-level navigation, starting to create a starting point for the journey of our different personas. Uh, and then if you continue in the journey, uh, we decided to create some product pages that were optimized for PAM, our PM, and for other business users. And those business users, when they come to our developer portal, they're asking themselves, is this a com good company to work with? Um, is this worth investigating? Do I think they can help me with my problem? Uh, who else have they helped with, uh, with my problem already? Are they credible? Uh, and that's the question she has in mind. Uh, she needs to look good in front of her boss, so she doesn't want to pitch some company that has absolutely no cred. So for these product pages that we created, and you can easily have a look on developer.tomtom.com and follow the products, um, you'll see that we focus on simplicity. Uh, we're not focusing on all the details of the APIs. We are trying to focus on what you can use them for. We are trying to make them make it very visual. Uh, what it could look like. Uh, we try to add demos. Uh, we don't try to make it exhaustive. We only highlight those important features for the business users. And we try to build a lot of credibility by showing the logos of the companies that are already using this product. So that's an example of a product page that has been very much optimized for a very specific persona. Uh, but Bartosz is looking for something completely different. He also wants to check out our products. Uh, but he's interested in understanding what's under the hood. You know, he doesn't want to hear the marketing stories. He want to check the documentation. So we created these documentation pages where here the focus is completely different. It's about exhaustivity. Uh, it's about adding all the information structured in a logical and consistent way. Very important for software engineers. As detailed as possible. Uh, needs to be logical. And we try to avoid uh, distracting them with visuals, with gimmicks. Uh, so that is typically our documentation section is optimized for Bartosz. And then in your marketing, we'll try to bring the Bartosz type of profiles directly to those documentation pages where it has a PAM or a business user, we'll try to bring them to the other product pages that I was, uh, that I was showing you. Um, then David, the founder. Uh, then the founder, he comes to our developer portal, is um, trying to build a startup, he's trying to innovate, he's trying to differentiate from his competitors, uh, but he doesn't have a lot of resources to invest. So he doesn't want to invest too much time. He wants to understand quickly what he can expect from our APIs. Uh, and for him, we actually built an API explorer. So I don't know if the videos are working, but if not, you should go to developer.tomtom.com and you'll find it very easily. An API Explorer is a tool that you can, that our users can use to test APIs very rapidly. 
without creating an account, uh, without giving us an email address, without any API key, no credit card number, no phone, no email. They can just go check it out, check out how the API calls will be made. They can play with some of the parameters. They can review what type of responses they will get. And that is a great tool. I can only advise you to, um, to develop these tools for your developer portal if you have that type of users. Uh, because it's a great tool to for personas um, that have very little time to invest and they're curious and they want to check it out before they actually take the step of creating an account requesting an API key. Typically uh, a tool for uh, our dev in. And last but not least, uh, we have DJ. Remember DJ, he's our young software developers. He likes to work smaller, not harder. Um, he's looking for speed to market. Um, so what's top of mind for him is how easy is this going to be for me to build this? What's the quickest way I can build it? And I think here we're going back somehow to, uh, to what Milesia was telling us about um, code snippets because we, we found out they're extremely important um, for these types of users because they're looking to copy-paste code uh, in, in, in the quickest way uh, as possible. So for DJ, we built uh, interactive examples, which are uh, actual implementations of the TomTom -Tom APIs. Um, they're interactive, so you can play with some of the settings. We try to show the most popular use cases for our technology um, in those interactive examples. And more importantly, we offer those code snippets. Um, they can copy paste it directly. They can also uh, link directly to CodePen or to GitHub because we found out that they were a very popular tool with the type of personas um, like DJ, for instance. So those are four very concrete examples. Of course, we do much more than that in the background, and it's a continuous process to refine the journey for our developer portal. Uh, but those are four very specific examples of content that we built uh, with our TomTom -tom personas uh, in mind. So in conclusion, we went to this uh, very broad, bad stereotype about all developers um, to our four very familiar personas that we use in TomTom. -tom, and as we mention every day, we even joke about them. Um, it's like they're a friend. Um, and if I can maybe leave you with a, a, a word of advice as conclusion to this, um, to this presentation, um, they are the signs of success. And you'll know you're on the tra right track with your personas uh, when you actually refer to those personas in everyday life with your colleagues and you joke about them. Um, you know you're on the right track when you read a piece of content that's been written by one of your colleagues and you can immediately feel who it was written for. And it's starting to, to, to show really clearly in, uh, in the top top communications and that's a real sign of success for this work. Um, you'll know you're successful if you meet someone at a hackathon that's a user of your product or interested in your product and you immediately think, well, she's a classic Pam or he's a classic Bartosh. I really see, uh, I really recognize uh, my persona in this person. If you don't, then perhaps you need to add one more persona so you need to go back to the drawing board. And last but not least, you know you're successful with your personas if you notice some of the behaviors that you had predicted or described about one of your personas, if you see it happening in real life. Uh, one concrete example of that is that when we had uh, done the work uh, of defining Bartosz, the, the software engineers, we had said that this person was very likely to contribute to our forum, not by asking questions, but by actually answering questions from other users, because Bartosz is very seasoned, uh, he likes to be right, and he likes to share his knowledge. And we actually now, nowadays, starts to observe that type of behavior on our developer forum, where um, types of users from uh, the TomTom Maps APIs start helping out each other on our forum for technical questions, which typically tend to come from uh, younger personas uh, closer to DJ. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys um, today. This is our ex experience. This is the, the journey we're on. Um, I hope this was useful. I hope this was inspiring. Uh, I'll be in the unconference uh, group chat if you want to discuss more with me and my team. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.